In this video, we will cover how to switch between driver and autonomous control for VEX robot. If you're participating in the VEX robotics competition or similar, you might have to program an autonomous algorithm. And this algorithm might have to be triggered by either the VEX gamepad or the VEX competition switch. In this video, we will be covering both of those scenarios to see how the VEX competition switch works and how you can organize your Simulink models so that they are triggered by the switch or the buttons on your gamepad. First, we're going to give a brief description of what the VEX competition stages are and how they relate to the competition switch. And then we are going to walk you through the Simulink VRC template, which is the VEX robotics competition template, and how to populate it with all your Simulink and state flow algorithms so that your autonomous algorithms are triggered correctly. And finally, we're going to give you a brief overview and some demonstrations on how to use the gamepad buttons to trigger your different Simulink driver and autonomous algorithm. There are two main competition stages in the VEX Robotics competition. One of them is the autonomous mode and the other is the driver control mode. If you're competing at any event, these are gonna be controlled by the VEX competition switch. And if you wanna replicate this on your own, you might need a VEX competition switch for that. The VEX competition switch has uh, two physical switches, one of them that toggles between enable and disable, and the other toggles between driver and autonomous. The first mode of operation is called pre-autonomous, and it is when the enabled switch is set to be disabled and the mode switch is set to autonomous. In this stage, normally participants will program things like selecting the modes in their robot, if they have different autonomous routines for different conditions of the game or different starting positions, or if they want to adjust parameters such as having different gains or different gamepad configurations for different drivers. Once the enable switch is toggled to the enable position, then the autonomous mode will be triggered in your robot and your autonomous algorithm should start. And then finally, the referee will toggle the mode switch into the driver position and the, that will be the beginning of the driver control mode of the competition. Now we're going to go over to Simulink to see what the VEX Robotics competition template looks like and how we can populate it so that we can have autonomous and driver control for a VEX club. Open MATLAB and go to the Apps tab and find your VEX companion application and open it. On the VEX V5 tab of the app, you will see on the V5 examples that the first example is called competition switch. We're going to go ahead and open this example by clicking open example. You can see that we have a block with three connections for the different competition stages, autonomous, driver, and pre-autonomous. And these connections go to something called Simulink enabled subsystems. These are blocks that contain all of the algorithm that you've developed. If we were to click on the autonomous uh, block, you will see that there is a constant going into a motor and this means that in this case, the autonomous algorithm will just make motor run in one direction. What we're going to do in this video is populate this template with the algorithms for a VEX club. Since we're not going to be programming any pre-autonomous tasks, we're going to go ahead and select and delete the pre-autonomous block. And we're going to go back to our VEX companion app to find some examples to copy into the driver and autonomous subsystems. In the VEX companion app, scroll on the v5 examples to find the clawbot examples and we're going to open the vex clawbot driver example in this simulink model you will see that we've programmed an arcade control to control the left and right motors of the vex clawbot and then we have the right joystick controlling the arm moving up and down and the claw opening and closing we're going to select the algorithm that we've developed to for the driver control portion of our stage and we are going to copy this we can right click and copy it and we're going to go back to our vrc template go into the driver subsystem and replace the contents of it with our algorithm now this floating block that you see on the canvas is the enable block and is what gives us the input for this subsystem to be triggered by the VEX competition switch. Similarly, we're going to open up an autonomous demonstration and copy the algorithm into the autonomous subsystem. 
So let's go back to the VEX Companion app and open the Clawbot Auto State Flow example. In this example, we have the four motors in the Clawbot being controlled by a state flow chart. In this case, that's telling the robot the correct commands to move forward, grab an object, lift the object, turn around, move backwards, and then drop the object. What we're going to do for the purpose of this video is copy all the contents from this algorithm and go back to our VRC template simulink model. Double click to go inside the autonomous subsystem and replace the content of this subsystem with the algorithm we've previously developed. Now, if we go back to the top level of our VRC template, we can check that we have our algorithms for the driver and autonomous version inside of the subsystem. And to deploy this algorithm to our VEX robot, what we're going to do is find in the Simulink tool strip the tab that says Hardware, and we are going to click the button that says Build, Deploy, and Start. In this video, we'll see how the robot interacts with the VEX competition switch. You can see that when I press the Enable button, the autonomous mode will execute, and the robot will move forward, pick up the cone, move backward, and drop it. And when we toggle the mode switch to driver mode, then the gamepad or joystick will be enabled and you can drive the robot. Now we are going to show you some demonstrations on how you can trigger your autonomous algorithms using the buttons on the VEX gamepads. We're going to go back to our VEX companion app. And in this case, we're going to go to the VEX Cortex tab. We're going to open some VEX Cortex models that are called Best Simbot Autonomous. We're going to start by opening the best Simbot autonomous subsystem model. And in this model, you will see that we also have an autonomous and a driver control enabled subsystems that have already been populated. But in this case, we are using the information from two gamepad buttons to toggle between these two different modes of operation. On the left, you will see that we've set up two buttons in order to have redundancy and safety that were latching this behavior so that we would have to press them again in order to move out of the autonomous mode. And we have a rate transition in order to help us debounce this signal so that we don't have any false positives. In this case, we've set up the sample times of these buttons to be 0.5 seconds. So you would have to hold down the buttons for half a second. Similarly, you can use different buttons or multiple buttons to trigger your different algorithms. In this case, if you were to look inside the autonomous mode, you will see that we have an autonomous chart controlling a different VEX-based robot. And you guys are welcome to come in and paste your algorithms in this template as well. If we go back to our VEX companion app, we will see that we have another demonstration of how to trigger autonomous algorithms using the gamepad. We're now going to open the best in but autonomous chart example. In this example, we are not using Simulink enabled subsystem, but instead we are routing all of our gamepad inputs into a stateful chart. And this is going to give us a little bit more flexibility in terms of programming. You can see on the left that we still have the redundant buttons that will be triggering our autonomous algorithm, and that they have also been debounced to 0.5 second hold. And if we double click on our operating modes chart, you will see that we have two different modes of operation, one of them being driver control, which is a pass through of the joystick information into the motor commands. And then we are toggling between the two different states or modes of operation by using the trigger signal or a done signal from the autonomous mode. That's coming from the buttons that we've set up as a trigger. And if you double click on the autonomous mode subchart, you will see that we've implemented a sequence of commands here for a robot to move forward, turn around, move backward, and stop. Let's take a look at the behavior of the Simbot when the Simulink model is uploaded.
that brings us to the key takeaways of this video. We explained the difference between the BEX competition stages and we demonstrated how to switch between driver and autonomous modes using the VEX competition switch or the VEX gamepad. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and make sure to check the video description for more resources on how to program autonomous robots.